Do you know this guy? Have you ever had one of those moments in video games where you're slaughtering NPCs in GTA and you start to question the nature of humanity? You wonder, how much more I can handle? Is this the real me? These moments are usually reserved for books and movies, but true gamers know that games can create these moments even better. It's horrifying, but sometimes even better than real life. Yes, about that guy. He is Marcus de Sade. But who is he? Be patient, I'll get to that soon. Today's video is deeply connected with human um, desires. So let me ask you this. When a human is on the brink of death knowing there's no chance of survival, what do you think occupies their thoughts? Could it be A. Their regrets B. Peace C. Their parents or D, the meaning of axismus. Axismus. Well, the answer is. Well, good job, you guessed it right. None of the above. When faced with mortal danger, one of the most prominent thoughts that emerges is related to sexual intercourse. It's a primal instinct to seek someone to pass on your genes and ensure the continuation of your legacy to the next generations. Of course. It's important to note that there is no one-size-fits-all answer to this question, but for the sake of what I'm about to share with you, let's consider this as what we think about when we are about to die. But wait, how all of these are related to sadism in video games? Well, recently, while creating a video about the history of Amnesia games, I found out that there is something in this series that I actually never heard of. Hell, you probably never heard of it either. I found out that there is a game. A DLC to be precise, that is not well advertised since it was never part of the main game that was Amnesia The Dark Descent. Since I was about to create a video on the topic, I read more about it, even went and finished the whole game. And believe me, it was an act of sadism from the developers itself because the game is basically impossible to play. And I found out many fascinating sides of this game. It was Amnesia Justine, and let's first talk about the name, Justine. Who is this Justine? She is the main character of the game. She is at the same time the unaware woman who doesn't remember anything and is scared and lost. And also the great mastermind behind everything. The true villain. Justine locks herself up in a room and drinks an amnesia inducing mixture. Why? Well, it's kinda simple. Remember that guy? Yes, this guy. Marquis de Sade, French nobleman, revolutionary politician, philosopher, and writer famous for his literary depictions of a libertine sexuality as well as numerous accusations of sex crimes. He believed in freedom of individuals more than anything, freedom in speech, in life and literature, freedom of thought, and most importantly, sexual freedom. But ironic fact is, de Sade spent a significant portion of his life in various prisons and asylums. His works include novels, short stories, plays, dialogues, and political tracts, and his most famous book, a novel named Justine. In the novel, Justine faces dangerous situations and becomes a victim of violence, both physical and sexual. She meets different people, some who take advantage of her innocence, while others try to help, but can't protect her. The Sad uses Justine's story to explore his philosophical ideas about virtue, society's corrupting influence, and the lack of divine justice in the world. He presents a pessimistic view of human nature and challenges traditional ideas of morality and virtue. You see, the Sad believed that the anger, rage, and the urge to cause pain to others are not merely responses to external events, but inherent aspects of our soul and nature. According to him, these feelings cannot be changed and one should instead embrace them and find fulfillment within them. Now, coming back to the game, V might disagree with Justine's harsh ideologies and his psychological state. She is often judged and seen as evil. What could she do? Well, as she also believed that this is within her nature, she drank the amnesia mixture so she will not remember her own ideologies and be a pure soul. But what happened? Was she right or wrong? Was this urge part of her nature and soul? Or was it just something that happened to their mind after experiencing the world and watching it? Hello, apparently I'm lucky. Now, have you ever found yourself in a heated argument with someone? 
where tension escalated and neither of you was willing to back down from your beliefs. The argument continued and eventually it became clear that you were right all along. It's a moment of triumph, but sometimes something else lurks beneath the surface. A sense of superiority and a desire to mock the other person. In such situations, a normal person might feel sympathy and try to understand the other person's perspective, but a sadistic person takes pleasure in seeing the other person humiliated and in pain. The satisfaction driven from causing pain to someone else can be a sign of sadistic tendencies. It's important to remember that human emotions are complex and each person's response can vary depending on the circumstances. While some may feel a sense of superiority, others may experience empathy and a desire for understanding. Okay, now you probably already knew this. This is pretty much sadism, a known psychological problem that made you enjoy burning those bugs using magnifying glass. But what does it have to do with games? Well, as you saw, some games directly point out the sadistic aspects of human, be it they believe it is in our nature or something else. Just like you've seen. But that's not the point. See, sadism is a serious problem. Well, you don't say. Of course the desire to cause pain and hurting others is a serious problem, but things will take an unusual turn. See, sadism used to be included as a personality disorder, meaning that if you harmed someone, you could somehow get away with it by claiming that you are a sadistic person, and thus, you have mental disorders. But then this law was removed over concern that medicalizing it as a disorder would be a way for people to misuse it in the court system and allow people to not be held responsible for criminal acts because of having disorder. So sadism is no longer officially recognized as a specific personality disorder. However, many researchers still think that this is a real thing, separate from just being mean or aggressive. It's not the same as what you might see in other conditions like psychopathy, narcissism, or antisocial personalities. So even though it's not an official disorder, there's still a lot of interest in studying it and understanding its unique aspects. In an online article, researchers ask the question, do everyday sadists prefer violent video games or do they just enjoy games in general? The studies found out that, as expected, they were more drawn to the violent ones. Interestingly, everyday sadism wasn't linked to liking or being interested in non-violent shooter games. In fact, it was even negatively related to liking or being interested in neutral video games. It seems like there's a connection between sadistic tendencies and the preference for violent virtual harm in video games. Let's have a disclaimer here. I am no psychologist or therapist. My knowledge in that area is limited to dealing with rogue teenagers and angry kids in classroom. So if you seek more details, look for people who actually know what they're doing. I'm just your average gamer that loves talking about games and share his passion with like-minded people. Now, with that being said, the real question for me is this. The real reason I created this video, the real idea behind it. From sadism roots and history, these references in games. I wanted to know something. Is it any good? I mean, as a gamer, I know that games changed my life significantly. It's not just that they can teach you stuff. They've become a way of escaping this shitty reality we live in. But can they actually be of use in health issues? Well, at least in this case, these studies have shown that they actually are. For sadistic people, games are a way of changing their mood and even sometimes fulfill their needs. We can talk about it for days that, is it okay? Will it actually work? Is it the real solution? But no. I have a better question. Since this has been a video about questions and questions and questions, question is, should it be like this? Should the gaming world embrace this aspect? Is it possible to use gaming for mental health support? And in doing so, will the gaming world remain as good as it was before? Until next time, happy gaming. Axismus.